Good morning. I'm Peter Milios from the Finance News Network. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose on Tuesday for the first time in seven days as Wall Street readied for the end of the first half and investors piled back into tech stocks. Overall, the 30 stock index climbed 0.63%, the S&P 500 advanced 1.15%, while the Nasdaq Composite surged 1.7%. Friday marks the end of the second quarter and first half of 2023. The Nasdaq has gained 10.9% since the start of April and 29.5% this year. It's on pace for its best first half in 40 years as investors scoop up on technology stocks after 2022's slump. The S&P 500 and Dow are on track to finish the quarter up 6.6% and about 2% respectively. For June, the S&P 500 and NASDAQ are on pace to close nearly 5% higher, while the Dow is poised for a monthly advance of 3.1%. In company news, popular technology and artificial intelligence names such as NVIDIA, Meta Platforms and Microsoft rose on Tuesday, reversing Monday's sell-off and lifting the tech-heavy NASDAQ. Consumer discretionary and travel stocks also took flight as Delta Airlines boosted its financial guidance. The airline's stock surged 6.8%. Despite Tuesday's broad market rally, Walgreens shed 9.3% after slashing its full-year profit guidance and reporting weaker-than-expected earnings. Elsewhere, Wall Street assessed a fresh batch of economic data that signalled resilience despite fears of an impeding recession. May durable goods data unexpectedly increased, while consumer confidence improved more than expected in June. New home sales also topped expectations. Global financial services powerhouse UBS Group plans to cut over half of Credit Suisse's workforce, reducing reducing total combined headcount by 30% or 35,000 people as part of the bank's emergency takeover, resulting in a dismal year for the financial sector job market worldwide. As the second quarter concludes, there is growing discussion among investors regarding rebalancing flows, with JP Morgan Chase estimating potential equity selling of up to $150 billion by balanced mutual funds, US defined benefit pension funds, and Norges Bank, accompanied by significant bond buying, while approximately $50 billion worth of US equities could be put up for sale as part of the rebalance. In commodity news, the fourth largest iron ore miner globally, Fortescue Metals Group, anticipates shipping its inaugural shipment from the Balinga project in Gabon by year's end, following a partnership agreement with the Gambonese government to commence mining operations and produce around 2.0 million tonnes annually, utilising existing, existing infrastructure and the Oenda Mineral Port for transportation. Overnight, all US sectors closed higher except for health. Consumer discretionary was the best performer. And investors speculate that Japanese authorities may initiate significant market intervention to support the yen due to a sharp depreciation, with Finance Minister expressing vigilance and willingness to respond if the drop becomes excessive. The SPY futures are pointing to a 0.4% rise. Thank you for listening.